Okay, so today's tomato review is going to be on the Russian Rose Tomato. So let's take a closer look at the inside of the Russian Rose. This tomato is absolutely enormous, so I actually got to hold it back so I can get it in the screen. This is probably a one pounder that I popped off right here that I cut in half. I mean, this tomato is absolutely enormous. And it's not totally ripe, unfortunately, but I had to get them off the vine because the insects are getting there and the birds are starting to pick out my tomatoes. And so I kind of had to get in there and pop these off a little bit early. I kind of let them ripen for about a day, but they really need to sit for like maybe three or four more days. And then they'd really be ripe to where I'd like them to be anyway. But we'll give it a taste test anyway a little early because I can't leave them out on the table and just kind of give you a, a look at what's going on here. Now, it's a little dry on this side because I don't think it fully ripened all the way around. But you can see it's got a beautiful pink color on the inside. There is wilding inside the tomato all the way around. Not too much on the rind, and the rind is kind of thin, but the inside of this tomato is all meat on the inside of it. Look how much meat is on the inside of there. I would definitely say this would be a good sauce tomato, absolutely. A couple tomatoes at this size, you can easily make a pot of sauce. Now, I do see detachment from the seeds, and, uh, from the rind. I do see the seeds ain't firmly attached to the rind. And again, that's probably because I picked the tomato early and I had to do that. So I'm not going to really downgrade this just because of that, though... I do have some of these other tomatoes I could slice these open. I mean, these these are just gorgeous. This is probably three quarters of a pound right here, this one right here. It may even be a pound. And this one here is definitely over a pound. This is probably two pounds. I mean, look at the size of that tomato to my hand. <laughs> that thing is absolutely enormous. It's incredible how big this thing is. Now, this tomato I'm going to let ripen for a couple days before I use it because it's still you can see the top still kind of green on it and that is a characteristic of this tomato it does get like a yellowish greenish shoulders so you will see that but that doesn't mean that the tomato is not ripe you really do want to wait until these tomatoes get really pink on the bottom that's when I found that they're best but if you pick them early they're going to be kind of dry and like, this is probably pretty good for market if you're looking to bring this out to a market. So that's a good color. You can see the um, these big grooves in here on this tomato. This is just an amazing tomato. I definitely like this tomato, but I just wanted to give you a look at that enormous size tomato. Look at that. That is just a gorgeous tomato. Had I had a healthier vine and let the vine stay on there and the insects and the blight and everything didn't get it, this tomato probably could have got three to four pounds. All the tomatoes that are on that vine right now, I mean, there's still tomatoes on there right now. It's just, they're still too green for me to pick them. So I'll let them sit a little longer. These were kind of getting pink. And I said, well, let's get them off of there now before the insects get them and the birds start poking holes in them. But... All the tomatoes coming off this vine were very large tomatoes. They were all very large. Not too many small ones. Like this is a small one, but this was kind of coming off a, a branch that already started dying. And, you know, because some of the branches are dying, but some of the main stem is still good. So that was coming off some of the dying branches. But the main branch was putting out very large tomatoes. This is definitely a tomato I would look into if you're looking to enter a contest for large tomatoes. This would probably be a variety that you would want to grow because that is absolutely enormous. Actually, all the tomatoes coming off it are enormous. So, let's give it a taste test and see what it tastes like. Right out the gate, it's very smooth. 
very smooth. It's low on the tang and it's low on the sweetness. But the inside was nice and moist. It wasn't chalky. And the flavor was just like a very smooth, consistent flavor. Excellent tomato for like a hamburger or a sandwich or something like that. A very nice, smooth flavor. Let me take another bite and see if I could get some more of that tomato taste out of it. It's almost like eating watermelon. It doesn't taste like watermelon. It's a nice, moist, watery tomato. It has a very nice tomato aftertaste. And on my second bite I just took, it seems like the tangy went up a little bit. So I'm going to say probably 30 on the tangy, 25 on the sweetness because the sweetness is a little low. But the balance is still pretty good. And it's a nice, moist, wet tomato with a really good aftertaste of tomato that comes in afterwards. It, it's just a really nice tomato. Very nice. I would love to make a sauce with these tomatoes. And believe me when I tell you, you ain't going to need very many to make a pot of sauce with this. You'll have a pot of sauce with about two or three tomatoes. You could feed your whole family. Very, very nice. I really like this tomato. Let's put a little salt on it. Wow, once you put the salt on it, that really brings the flavor out a lot. A real lot. That is, that is a fantastic tasting tomato. I thought that was going to be a dry tomato because of the hollow spots around the side. I'm wrong about that with this tomato. This tomato was very moist, very tasty, even the unripened area. I didn't get any kind of unwelcome flavor from the unripened area. It's, everything tasted great on this tomato. Very, very nice tomato. As far as me rating the tomato, for size, for the amount of this put out, it not only it did this tomato plant put out very large tomatoes, it put out a lot of tomatoes. There A lot of tomatoes came off this vine. There was probably 15 or 16. I mean, you'd probably get a lot more if you let the vine fully grow out. But compared to all my other tomatoes, this one probably did the best, to be honest with you, as far as production. Very productive tomato. If you were selling this by weight, you would make a lot of money with it because these tomatoes are very heavy, very large tomatoes. So as far as me rating the tomato, I'm going to have to say for taste, flavor, overall part of it, and because of the fact that it's very productive tomato, it was putting out these really large tomatoes, because that vine was so vigorous, I'm going to rate this as a number one tomato for like the beef steaks and slicer tomatoes. This is definitely a number one tomato for me. Absolutely love this tomato. And I would definitely recommend this. The tangy and the sweet could probably balance out a little bit. But I may get that from this tomato once I open it. I may get a really nice flavor out of it. So it's really hard to say. I mean, this one was still a little unripened. But I bet you if you let them ripen up all the way. And if the plant was healthier and the seeds were more attached to the rind, I probably would get a very, very perfect flavor out of it. Definitely a number one for my beefsteak tomatoes. This is by far uh, some of the best productive beefsteaks I've ever grown. I mean, for, for tomatoes this size, I mean, I can't even try to describe the enormity of this thing. <laughs> it's just absolutely huge. I didn't want to pick it. I wanted it to stay on until it was fully ripened, but... I had to get it off of there. But man, that is one heck of a tomato, let me tell you. If you've never grown the Russian rose tomato, after watching this video, I would recommend that you grow this tomato. This is, if you're looking for large tomatoes, this is the tomato to grow. This is definitely, you know, just make sure your soil is right, okay? I made a mistake this year by reusing old soil. I assumed that there was enough nutrients in it that I would be able to grow all my tomatoes and without having to add too much lime to it. And because of that reason, a lot of my plants, my tomato plants really suffered. So I recommend if you're looking to grow, you know, a half dozen plants, just buy your soil new, even if you got to buy it in bags. Beef that soil up with lime and calcium and give it plenty of Epsom salt and buy some rock dust and buy all the works for it. Make your soil really good for your tomatoes and you will definitely get some really good growing size tomatoes out of this particular variety all right so again i rate this as a number one this year for beefsteak tomatoes 
and just overall large tomatoes. I think there's a name for that, for those large tomatoes. I don't remember what they call them. It's, it's beyond beefsteak. It's something else, giant tomatoes or something. There's another name for that kind of classification. But for this, for beefsteak for now, this, this is a number one tomato. I highly rate this. Tastes great. Grows huge tomatoes. Grows plenty of them. Definitely a number one. So that's your review for the Russian Rose Tomato. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.